So I don't want to get into this like because you could we could do a whole podcast just on this. What's so, the name of the podcast, by the way? Uh, what Mama never told us about real estate. I mean, come on, like, like this is something that they never told us that that deals sometimes don't close. Barack and I were talking about this on our way down here. Yeah. Deals sometimes don't close. I, and without going into craziness, because I know you could talk about this forever. How often does that happen? That stuff actually isn't closed. Like, what percentage of deals are not actually closing? Just twofold question: one, that are not closing at all, and that are not closing on the day of, and they get adjusted and moved and extended and so forth. When times are good, so when it's a hot market, times are beautiful. Everybody's asking for whatever price they want. They're getting whatever price they want. Things are closing. Generally, you have very little issues. When you come times already that people get more nervous or more issues are coming up in the economy or in life, whatever be it, uh, then you're finding all of a sudden that there's more delays in closings. It's harder to get more. Usually it's around the mortgages. Right. If I had to say what the real reason is, most of the time it's people knocking their mortgages and it's because they left it to the last minute. They're thinking, okay, I want to really shop around for the interest rate. What they don't get is when you apply for that mortgage at your branch or with your mortgage rep, still that paperwork has to go to some central mortgage processing center that takes time to process and then the lawyer gets instructed so from the time they sign their mortgage commitment to the time the lawyer sees the instructions it could be several days could be several weeks depending on the institution but it used to be way more efficient it was literally it was signed and it was over to you guys conditions were met and you were ready you know you're ready to fund you had the money you're ready to go like yes. I, this wasn't that long ago that literally it would be within one day funds are there and closings were happening at noon on closing day you know like absolutely right and things yeah. just got it's funny we went to more of an electronic system and we're really i think at bunches for some reason for lenders it's harder for them in the electronic system to forward that paperwork to get everything done everybody's so careful it's sitting with underwriting i don't know what the reasons are and then from there it's actually the processing of money with fraud and everything else so you, uh, an institution wires you money if, let's say, at 12 o'clock, I may not see it in my account till 4 p.m. sometimes, depending uh -huh. on how they do it. Right. And there are some institutions, when you're going to a B lender, so when you're not going with one of the major institutions, and let's say you're going with a B lender, uh, they very often don't send the money the same way that a type A institution does. So you go to a Royal Bank, a CIBC, they forward the money to the lawyer right away in the morning, and they say, hold on to the money until we give you the okay. The B lender says, I'm not even gonna send you the money because I don't trust you until everything's okay. Only then I'll send you the money. And so we're contacting like a trust type company. We're like, guys, it's 4 p.m. We've sent you everything weeks ago. You found a new condition all of a sudden last minute. Send me the money. Yeah. Let me hold on to it because I can't do anything without your direction anyways. But that's what tends to hold it back. So people don't realize not all lenders are created equally. But to go back to your original point, the one good thing I will say is majority of the deals are still closing 99.99% of the time. It's That's still good. good. Yeah. But issues come up where all of a sudden you get that stretch, that delay. I'm encountering one recently where all of a sudden, you know, I've talked before many times about what is not the best uh, date to uh, buy a property. And people think, is it the beginning of the month, end of the month? It's when you don't buy and sell on the same day. Yeah. And why does that happen? Amen to that. Because yeah. all of a sudden, <laughs> when you're selling a property, you need your buyer to have their mortgage money. Yeah. Your sale has to close, and only then can we deal with your purchase, which also has a mortgage. Right. I, I always advocate bridge. Oh. Pay for the bridge, yeah. close your purchase, go get it cleaned, everything is nice, and if you get a little bit of a delay on your sale, say la vie. If you go and buy and sell on the same day, you will get all the stuff on your truck at noon, the stuff sitting Stay on the, the truck, truck. It's out 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5 every, p.m. Everybody, everybody's getting calls. I, where's my keys? I'm paying hourly yeah. rate for the mover. The, the movers want to leave. They're, they're threatening to not. They're threatening to not give me my stuff unless I pay them up front for the waiting time. It, it gets ridiculous, you know. Yeah, I've seen all, heard it all, and then, yeah. all, and then all of a sudden you got to put your stuff into storage. You got to go sleep in a hotel. We had one situation where the seller was so late, and move, and one of them it was the seller was actually late moving their stuff out. The yeah. deal already closed at 1 p.m but the seller didn't get their, their act together. Then there was like some sort of snowstorm. The seller ended up sleeping on the living room floor with the buyer. Wow. The buyer was nice enough, they felt bad. So in this industry, you kind of see it all. I'm, I'm, gonna give, I'm gonna give one bit of advice before we let go on this. Uh, all the agents out there, you know, our agents, other agents, please help the lawyers out. Do not close on Fridays. Do not have your closing date on a Friday, all right? And any other day that you could do, choose it because if it doesn't close on the Friday, your clients are screwed for the entire weekend and they can't deal with things until Monday, so. Let's make it even better. Sure. This is how we'll do it. 
I cross out the first week of the, of the month, cross out the last <laughs> week, cross out Mondays, cross out Fridays, cross out the 15th, and anywhere else, Tuesday to Thursday, the second and third week, that's what you I got complimented yeah. that I told my buyer, you can't close on a Monday or Friday. And they said to their lawyer, my realtor suggested I do Monday or Friday. And the lawyer is like, you have a bang out realtor. Of course, you just, just, saved, you just saved the lawyer another <laughs> headache. You know, like, and, and imagine, <laughs> imagine if everybody started doing this, then there'd be no closings on Fridays or Mondays. But, but you know what? Realtors have gotten a lot better at this. I've had several end of the months where we actually didn't have that many transactions. They actually spread them out over each day of the week there instead of everything being on the 30th, everything being on the 1st. It's way healthier. What people don't get is why, why do we do this? They think, oh, it's so convenient for everybody right at the end of the month. If somebody's leasing, then you pull it right to the end of the rental period. But all the banks are going at the same time. All the moving companies are going yeah. at the same time. When you have money waiting for a mortgage, for example, let's say you bank with TD, right? And let's say TD's closing on the 30th. All this mortgage money is sitting up somewhere. Somebody has to pull it out for each of the individual transactions. When there's not a lot of transactions, the money goes quick. If we're closing thousands of transactions, not so quick.